What's the crack lads? Welcome back to another tier list. We have done a few of these, but we're going to be doing these on a weekly basis with all the weekly content or cards, right? So all of these that you see on screen here, this is going to be ending tomorrow. All of these that you see here, we've scolds in there as well. And I'm just going to be ranking them. Now, this is not going to be how these cards are comparing on a tier list or a ranking list to other players. It's literally within a vacuum on a week by week. So for example, Zico is going to be compared against the likes of Paul Scholes, and he's going to be compared maybe against the likes of Kovacic or somebody like that. But if you were to put Kovacic into the conversation of best CMFs or AMFs, it's just not going to be relatable. Like there's no point. It's the same with Badis Juta, you know, being ranked against Collar and Lewandowski and Xerxes. There's just no comparison between ranking these against Mbappe in a big wider kind of tier list, okay? So this is going to be a week-to-week -week thing, right? Now, we don't need to complicate this too much. Any of the player of the week players that you see here, I'm just going to probably shove a few of these in. The goalkeeper is going to go into D. We're also probably going to put this guy into C. These three boys are going to go into uh, D or C. It depends on how you're using them. Depends on how you actually... With what look you get him, right? I think that these are probably the four worst. Now, obviously, this guy from Juventus, he has actually got a booster in the game. Um, but, like, nobody's really going to use him if, unless you're a newcomer. So that might be a bit, a bit harsh. And also, as well, I do think that with the J-League here as well, these J-League players, in my opinion, right, unless you are having an event-only squad, right, I have been playing this game for about two years, three years, like, where I've been literally, you know, playing against very difficult opponents sometimes in Division 1, all the way to playing the events against people that just, you know, have lesser skilled squads. I'd say I've come up against an all J League team or an all teamed team like that probably a handful of times, right? So I don't think that people are making these squads really to compete. They're probably making them just to get the boost. Obviously, with all these cards, you get a plus three boost to every stat based on this, or it used to be that way with the J Leagues, and that's why people were building J League squads, right? So for this, I think if you are, okay, if you are making an all J League squad, just bump up this ranking by one. So for example, if I put this DMF guy into C, he's automatically going to be a B if you're using an all J-League squad. Does that make sense? And I'm going to probably pop into two of these boys here and probably pop the two of these boys in here, okay? Again, it's kind of... It just depends, right? It's very hard to rank players in a vacuum like this unless it's the top tier players because that's what most people are looking to, looking to gain information on, right? Now as we kind of like narrow this down and it's going to be quick enough video, right? We also have the right back. We're going to slot him in to see. He's got okay stats. I mean, if you look at his stats here... And we're to actually look at a couple of these players of the week stats um, or the, the player of the weeks here. He does have a couple of nice stats, right? There's no doubt about that, right? And we did actually pull him and train him a little bit. He doesn't have the booster, but he's going to have 90 plus speed. You're going to have fairly decent stats all around. But just for where the game is at at the moment, I can't put him higher than a C, unfortunately for him. It's different with the likes of Xerxes, who is a player that I really wanted. And obviously he has the booster. It's a unique first time card for him. I think that's a little bit different, but... I still think that it's going to be hard to kind of compare him, right? Because Lewandowski is in there as well. Now, once we're down, we've kind of got the big boys left. I'm going to rather controversially, 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 I'm going to put Lewandowski into a B, right? The reason why I put him into a B is because Collar and Badass Shuda are going to be in there as well. And you know how I feel about Collar. If you're new to the channel, Collar is probably my all-time favorite player. He's a goal a game in Dream Team for me since about two years. He's just an absolute beast, right? If I'm putting Lewandowski in there, I'm going to put Xerxes in there as well. And that also means that I'm probably going to put in, I would say, I'm going to put Matoma in there as well. Now, the reason why I put Matoma in there is, yes, this is an okay Matoma card, but it's not probably not in the top five or six cards that they've ever released of him. It's actually quite a disappointing card in certain ways, right? So if you have got him and you're beasting with the wings, you might be like cursing at the monitor there or the screen and being like, what is he talking about? How is he be in comparison with Lewandowski? But for me, I do think that there needs to be to make these tier lists kind of like viable. If you play the game, right, you do need to rank them fairly harshly because obviously there's only a limited pool of players and putting Matoma at an A, when we're probably going to be putting somebody like Badis Studa, is going to be, you know, there is no comparison. There's a big gulf between A and B and B and C, if that makes sense, right? I'm also going to put in Salah into A, and I'm going to put Saka into A. I do feel that if the Legends or the Epics weren't in this, I do think that Salah and Saka would go up. The problem with Saka and Salah is that they have a lot of weaknesses in their card. Salah, from a positioning point of view, that he doesn't play that many positions and he's a whole player, obviously, which is unique. 
and Saka because he's missing a good few skills and he's I just feel like Saka never plays well in the in football for me maybe it's just a personal choice maybe I'm being a bit kind of sleeping on him but I do feel that he isn't quite there now also I'm going to take a look just to round this off with Kovacic right you obviously have Zico you've got Mateus and you've got Paul Scholes right straight off the rip I'm going to probably put the three of these in to S tier right the reason why I put these into S tier is Scholes he plays above his stats Zico has got unbelievable like stats and plays really well on the pitch and Mateus is just super fun to play with. This card specifically is a very, very super fun, covers all areas. And he is probably up there in the top tier of CMFs or DMFs that can cover. A couple of weaknesses, obviously, in the card as well. He's not the full package like Vieira uh, from a defensive standpoint, or maybe Pirlo from an all-rounder standpoint, but he definitely is really, really nice. That kind of leaves us with Kovacic, which I know a lot of people have been asking me, do I rate Kovacic S tier? Do I rate him A tier? Do I rate him B tier? I'm probably going to stick him into A. And the reason being is I have been, you know, waxing lyrical about Kovacic a lot. As an attacking option, he's unbelievable. He's a little bit slow, a little bit clunky, but he can be smooth if you play him as an attacking option rather than trying to defend a little bit with him, right? That also leaves our S tier Czech goalkeeper, my favorite goalkeeper in the series, even ahead of Schmeichel. And if we were doing a tier list with like 100 of the best players in the game, I think Czech and Scholes and Mateus would be super high up on this as well. And Czech would definitely be, you know, flirting with an S or an A tier. Probably an S tier for me, to be honest, in an overall, no matter what tier list we do. So he's always going to be there. And then, of course, we're talking about King Collar, right? King Collar, I think he can compete with the bullet header uh, players, um... Uh, Ronaldo, I think he's, you know, I think he's unbelievable. He's a goal a game for me. His stats, a goal and assist, a goal or an assist every game. And then rounding us off, it is Maldini into the S tier as well. Now, looking at that, just to finish it off, right? I do feel that I am probably being a little bit harsh on some of the JLE players because obviously they've got really, really nice stats. Um, and maybe I'm, maybe I just haven't given them enough credit, and maybe I haven't given them enough kind of thought as to how they go. But I'm actually going to bump down Salah, lads, I think. And this isn't the Manchester United kind of bias or anything like that. I'm actually going to bump him down a little bit there just to try and try make a bit of a separation between it, right? I do feel like that those B-tier players are all kind of on even par. And then there's a couple of arguments for the B and C. But I, don't, I think those top six S-tier are definitely S-tier. Like, I, I, I could, you could argue Bada Shoot is up there as well. Of course you could. But I think that the top six there that you're seeing... Obviously, Collar could go down here if you've never played with him or if you don't play a tall target, man. The game does not suit Collar. We make this, we make Collar suit the game. That's how we play with him. But it is a different difference of opinion. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you enjoy these videos. And let me know if you'd like to see them every week. Until next time, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and the like button. And I'll talk to you in a bit.